What is going on, beautiful people? I am Lee Hammock, and welcome to another episode of A Narcissist Explains. I'm a diagnosed self-aware narcissist, and today's episode is going to be about how narcissistic people, toxic people, get you addicted to them. The push, pull, up, down, left, right, all the other stuff. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. how a narcissist gets you addicted to them. And if you're new here, I have narcissistic personality disorder. So I like to call this the savior Satan method. It's where the person that hurts you and causes you pain is also the person that makes you feel better and stops the pain. The person that sets you on fire is the person that puts you out. The person that tries to drown you is the person that throws you the life jacket. Because if a person does this enough, it conditions your mind to only think that this person is the savior. This person, you forget the pain. And the only thing you can think about is the pleasurable moments. And even if you remember the pain, the pleasures a lot of times over rides that making you become addicted to this person because that you think that they're the only person that can make you feel good and from the narcissist perspective a narcissist sometimes will get off on making you feel bad we will get off on triggering you because if they can trigger you they can control you and sometimes like weirdly a narcissist like when they put you in that pain they cause you to cry and scream they turns them on and they'll end up trying to sleep with you that's why they say makeup sex is the best sex because you go from pain to pleasure hope what is going on beautiful people welcome welcome back um again thank y'all thank y'all for watching if you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button for me um i really appreciate it um so that's one of the way main ways i keep saying to say wayne wayne mays <laughs> wayne mays who's wayne mays uh that's one of the main ways that narcissistic people toxic people get you addicted to them that could because a lot of this this is how i real this is how i feel right here y'all i think it gets to a point where it initially you love the narcissist, right? And then eventually, I don't think you love the narcissist anymore. I truly, truly think that you just become addicted to that person. I believe because of the push and pull, like I described in the TikTok, the push, pull, the up, down, the highs and lows, the constant, you know, uncertainty. I think you become addicted to that person, kind of like a you know, like a, like a drug. You literally become addicted to a person, like they are a drug, and that's where the trauma bond happens. So when this addiction happens, this trauma bond, or you know, like a version of Stockholm syndrome, when that happens, you become addicted to the person, or you try to empathize with the person a little too much. You try to understand that person a little too much, a little too much, and you start to blame yourself, because that's how you get addicted, y'all. That's how narcissistic people, toxic people, do it. They give you just enough to make you happy, and then they take it away. Then they give you just enough, and then they take it away. Just enough, take it away. Lower, lower, lower. So it gets to the point where they're giving you a smaller and smaller quantities in order to, you know, give and take. All the other good stuff, you know what I mean? So I feel like when you're dealing with narcissists, when you're dealing with toxic people, you have to understand the point that we, when it gets to the point where it hurts to leave them or it hurts and they leave you, I mean, of course it don't hurt if they leave you unexpectedly, but it gets to the point where it hurts if you leave them and like you go to, you have the physical symptoms. Not only do you have mental symptoms when you try to leave a narcissist, you got physical symptoms, physical symptoms as well. Like your, your head hurting, throwing up, not being able to eat, not being able to think. I know y'all looking at this right here. I told y'all my daughter is a nosy little, a nosy Nancy and she's just, Peeks out the garden and rips the curtain. You should you should see the one upstairs. You just completely destroyed that one. Um, but yeah, if you so you understand it, like I don't think you are in love with the narcissist anymore. I've said that before in a, in a couple of videos. I just think you're addicted to them, and that's how they do it. That's how they do it. They give you enough, and then they stop doing it. They please you, and then they stop doing it. You know, they can you they can also use sex as a way to control you. They definitely 100% can. They can use sex as a 100% way of controlling you, especially, you know, men, women, whatever. Like, narcissist knows no gender, you know. They can, but they can definitely use sex to control you, especially if you're a loyal person and you only want to get it from them and they're just not giving it to you anymore. Y'all done got married and all of a sudden y'all were doing, y'all were clapping cheeks, like, literally every, you know, every day, twice a day, three times a day, like, uh, you know, brushing your, it's like you're doing that more than you brush your damn teeth. But now you don't do it at all, you know. Now you don't do it at all. They don't even touch you anymore. They don't say anything. To, they don't give you any kind of loving, caring. No, they don't give you affection anymore. So you're craving it. You remember? You're craving it now. Here comes the addiction. You're fiending. You're fiending for some affection. So when they give it to you, if you're fiending for affection and they give you a little bump like a drug dealer, like a hope dealer, you know, they give you a little bump. Now you're satisfied. Like here's a little hit. You like, you sniff the, uh, the affection up and you're like, ah, ah, mm, I'm good. You know, 
and then you go off and then you go off again to to that high word is off, and then you get to come back for another you come back for another hit, you know. That addiction it hurts y'all. That's that's one of the like I said, it's so insidious a lot of times because they do it. Like, I know people are gonna like well the stuff that you describe it sounds dark as hell. Do they do that intentionally? It's intentionally un it's un so it's unintentional. I feel like it comes from a level of conscious unconsciousness. Like they've done it so much and it's like just so ingrained in our brains that we just do it naturally. We don't have to think about it. That's just literally how it does. And once like I said. I truly believe that in the beginning of a relationship with most narcissistic people, just the regular narcissists, not the sociopaths or the, you know, the ASPD people. I'm talking about the regular run of the male narcissists. I think in the beginning of most relationships, they really feel like they love you. That's why they're doing all this stuff for you. They're actually sacrificing who they really are to make you happy. And they're hiding it. You know, they're, hi they're hiding who they really are. They're sacrificing who they really are because they don't think you will accept who they really are. You know, they don't. They don't think it's possible for anybody to love them and, uh, who they really, who we really are. So we become somebody else. We become who you want us to be. But once that gets tired, once that narcissistic person gets tired of doing it, they will withdraw from you. You know, right? They will 100% withdraw from you and emotionally disconnect from you. When, it, when, when a narcissist or a toxic person, when they emotionally disconnect from you, it's pretty much over then because you, they cannot reconnect emotionally. You know. They, you know, they cannot reconnect emotionally, no matter how hard they try. Without like not, not an unaware person, because they don't know what to work on. You know, uh, but that takes years of therapy to work on that, to work on reconnecting that emotional, those emotional triggers to to fire off when they see the person that they care about, to try hard to make you happy. When they once they emotionally disconnect from you, it's, it's done then, and you're not done though. Because you're, once they get to the point where they emotionally disconnect from you, a lot of times you're at your peak emotional connection to them. So y'all are y'all are at opposite ends of the spectrum right now, right? So you're madly in love, wanting your cheeks clapped. This person over here is not in love anymore. And they're just emotionally disconnected from you, and they devalue you and treat you like crap. You know, so y'all are not y'all are on the same plane, but you're on different ends of the spectrum. You know what I mean? You're at different ends of the field. You're you're super emotionally connected. They aren't, and they give you they throw a little bit here and there to keep you to keep you happy. Like, there's little little breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs. That's where intermittent reinforcement comes from. But they give you a little bit, and it feels like a lot. A hug means so much more if you hadn't if you haven't gotten a hug in three months. The words "I love you" carry so much more weight and are, are much more pleasant on the ears if you haven't heard it in a, in a year. You know what I mean? So if you're dealing with narcissists or toxic people, understand that, that once they get emotionally disconnected from you, they yeah, I'm just telling you. Well, if you especially if you if you understand that you're dealing with narcissists, if you understand that you're dealing with toxic people and things like that, you have to realize that you there is it's tough, y'all. It really, really is tough. It's a tough thing to do. It's like you don't want to get to the point where you're, you know, begging somebody to love you. Because that's why that's how a lot of people are. When you get when you come to the the middle or the end of a narcissistic relationship, a lot of people who are dealing with the narcissist end up begging the narcissist to love them, end up begging them to treat them right, end up begging to do all this stuff. And who do you sound like? You sound like a uh, an addict begging a dealer for a hit. You, you you're willing to sell. You know how when you how you see these videos and things like that of people of you know drug addicts. Selling their selling their you know cards and stuff like that. Selling their pretty much selling their souls to, to for a, a hit to their dealer. Here's the here's the deed to my car. Just give me a hit. You know what I mean? That's what that's, that's what uh, survivors and victims of narcissistic abuse are doing near the end. You're begging for a hit. You know. So if they it's not does it work or not? Yeah, they might love you or give you a hug. Just come here after they hurt you. The same person who hurt you is the same person who saved you. You know what I mean? The same person, this sort of savior Satan complex comes in. The same person who is putting you through pain is the person who is saving you from the pain that they created. The, I say this all the time. The arsonist is also the, the, the chief firefighter. You know what I mean? The kidnapper is helping, is leading the search party for the kidnappee. You know what I mean? They are the person who's causing you the pain, and they are the person who's healing the pain. If they, if they consistently do that over and over and over again, guess what? You forget the person who caused you the pain. And they become your only source of healing, the only source of validation that you get. So you become addicted to them. That's another way. I know I went off on a couple of tangents here, y'all, but y'all, y'all still around. I appreciate you. Um, but yeah, you become addicted to them because that's what they've conditioned you to, be, to believe that they are the savior of your life. 
so everybody else can see them harming you. The only thing you can see that, like, you know, everybody else around you can see them harming you. Hey, that person in your life is harming the hell out of you. But you, you're just like, no, they saved me. They are the ones who hurt you. They are saving you from the pain they created. They're, they're, they're the doctor stitching up, stitching up the, the wound, the, the, the cut they put on your arm. You know, you forget who cut you because you, they're stitching your arm up. You know what I mean? Literally. So you have to take your power back in situations like this and understand, like, we, when you get to the point of, if you feel like you're at the point of an emotional disconnect from a narcissist, then you are at a different level. You know, there's no, there, there, and there's, I know a lot of people are just like, what can I do to get that person back in my life? There's nothing you can do to make a narcissist reconnect to you. You, there's no, you got, like sometimes you have to withdraw yourself. That'll make them reconnect sometimes because they'll go crazy. Because they don't expect you going to leave. You know, they don't expect you to leave. So yeah, they'll go crazy and you know try to you know get you back. They'll give you all the stuff that they were promising to give you. There you go again. They hurt you and they trying to heal you. You know, they put a band aid. You know, they <laughs> they put a splint on a broken leg and they the one who put a sledgehammer to it. You just have to you know, withdraw from people and make sure that you are this, your own source of validation. Because narcissists, they want to be, a, they want to be your only source of validation, which is why a lot of times they try to isolate you away from your family and friends. They don't want you to have people. They don't want you to get have other people in your corner. They want to be the person in your corner. They look. They want to be the person that's boxing you in the boxing ring. They want to be the person that's boxing you. But they also want to be your water boy in the corner, helping you. <laughs> you know, they don't hit you with a two piece. You done fell into the corner, and they they catch you like it's okay, it's okay. Get back, get, back, get out there and fight. Go fight. But anyway, y'all, this is what it's seven thirteen a.m. I had to take my son to school, y'all. I truly appreciate every single one of y'all. Like and subscribe for more mental illnesses. Peace.